Hi there. Hey, found Queen V Crafts, my channel all about my crafting life. My name is Eve, my pronouns are she, her, and this is Floss Tube episode number eight. Today is the 29th of February, 2024, so happy leap day to everyone uh, who is using this extra 24 hours for the better, mostly those who are starting long dog, long dog samblers for the long dog leap day sale. I am not, but um, maybe in four years, when y'all are finished with those, I will start one. <laughs> so today is a very exciting episode. It's been about three-ish weeks since I last filmed, and so I have a lot of projects to share with y'all today. Um, first we're going to go through the typical stuff. I've got a couple of whips, I've got some new starts, some haul, and then I thought I would also like to go over my Nashville Needlework Market wish list. Um, I've got well over 15, I think, that I've been eyeing, but I didn't place any pre-orders because I want to stitch them, but there was nothing that I was like, I have to have that right now. So they're on my wish list. If I see them when I'm at my LNS, um, I will most likely purchase them. But until then, they're just going to sit in a wish list. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, we'll do whips first. So the first thing that I worked on is the Enchanted Realms Sal by Caterpillar Cross Stitch. Um, I will put up the, the cover photo of what's been released so far. Um, we just got the second section uh, on the 22nd? Maybe, the, no, it was the 25th. Sorry, the 25th of February. And so here is where it was last time that I showed y'all this piece. And here it is now. So, the last time that I showed you all this, I was almost done with my dragons. Um, and now they're done. And I've decided to name them Winkin, Blinkin, and Nod as an ode to my favorite short story as a child. Um, and then I got started on the second part, which is Mermaids, which I think is the, the main, main reason that I purchased this sow was because I knew there was going to be mermaids. And I love mermaids. So I got some of the squirrel done started this mermaid, started their castle, and yeah, I'm really loving how this is looking so far. Um, if you are new here, this is 18 count very light pewter. It's a witch old fabric, and it is not the called for. It is something that I had in stash that was very close to um, what was called for, and then these are the called for DMC. I'm stitching one over one because I prefer one over one on 18 count. And ta da! Enchanted Realm so far. Alright, next up is Modern Folk Embroidery No Time Like the Present. This is what that looks like if you're unfamiliar. And where I was last time. And here it is now. This one is also on 18 count very light pewter. I am stitching two over one, um, which I don't know how I feel about. Uh, I'm this far, so I'm going to stick with it, obviously. 
but if I were to go back, I wouldn't stitch two over one on 18 count ever again. These are DMC's 38, check my notes, 3847 and 3849. And obviously you will have seen when I did the comparison shots how much I've added since the last time. It looks so good. I'm so happy with how this is turning out. So yeah, no time like the present. All right. Next up is my full coverage piece. I'm having trouble understanding you right now. Please try a little later. My Alexa was just like, haha. -ha. Weird. I didn't say anything. Anyways, full coverage piece uh, is a gecko rouge kit from the artist Medusa Dollmaker. Unfortunately. They no longer carry her artwork, which is really sad because it's beautiful. This is the one that I'm stitching. It's called Cosmic Lover. Um, this is where it was the last time that I showed y'all. And y'all are going to have to um, not or to ignore my hanging threads. Obviously, it's a full coverage piece, so a lot of people have hanging threads, but this is where I've gotten to. So I'm really enjoying stitching in the diagonal. Um, I honestly think that there's a better way to do this, like stitch in the diagonal. I just, every time I try to watch a video to learn how people typically stitch in the diagonal, I get lost. So if anyone has any tips or tricks on how to do this correctly, um, I would love to hear what y'all have to say. Um, this is 28 count, easy grid. I am stitching one over one. Um, I had originally bought the kit to do two over two on 28 count. Um, and I decided I didn't have enough wall space for something that big. Um, so as you can probably see there is a ton of extra fabric here and it is only going to be about half the size of what um, originally the fabric was cut for so cosmic lover and I'm excited how this is turning out so stitching over here next thing I worked on I did some uh, Christmas stitching um, on the 24th and the 25th of this month so I pulled out my We Santa by Heart and Hand. Um, this is the 2023 We Santa and it looks like this and this is what it looked like the last time that I showed y'all and I am going to stick this on my clipboard here because it's not it needs something behind it so here is where I am now you're gonna have to pardon the creepy floating face because I am not stitching any of the white until closer to the end because I don't want it to get dirtied. So all of his beard's gonna obviously go in here, but right now he's just a little floating face above his body. Um, but I love him. This is stitched on 36 count Brenda's Brew. Ready for the jet.
Okay, so this is Stitch on 36 Count Brenda's Brew by r and Reproductions. Um, and I'm using mostly the DMC conversion, except in his coat. This is Gentle Art Buckeye Scarlet, and this is Gentle Art Crystal Lake. And I'm pretty sure those aren't the called for colors, but I like them. I also switched his hat, it's supposed to be the Crystal Lake, but I wanted it to be red. So, red hat for our Mr. Santa here. And I love him. He's so, so sweet. So yeah, my 2023 was Santa. And the other project that I worked on, well actually, sorry, I have two more that I worked on for winter stitching on the, I think this one was the 25th, is the Winter Tear by Erin Elizabeth. This is what it looks like. Mine last time looked like this, and it looks like this now. I'm loving how it's turning out on this fabric, which is 18 Count Mystic by Picture This Plus. I'm using DMC. I think it's called for in DMC. Pretty sure. And I'm stitching one over one. It is so cute and so tiny. I feel like I said this when I started stitching. On this, um, I didn't realize how little it was going to be. I am thrilled. Like, these are so small. Um, especially on 18 count. Like, obviously they're, they're charted to be on 14 count, which is understandable. That makes it significantly bigger. But this is going to be such a cute little ornament, isn't it? I mean, like... It's less than the size of my hand. So cute. So yeah, this is Winter Tear. Alright. And the last thing that I worked on as a part of my Christmas slash winter stitching the end of the month is Snow Globe, which is a free pattern by DMC. You can get it off their website. Um, I will have it linked below, is Snow Globe. Um, I think I maybe already said that. Sorry. Um, this is what it will look like, and then I will put up what it looked like last time, and here it is now. I do apologize for it still being in the hoop. This fabric is so stiff and really annoying to get in and out of the hoop, so it lives in the hoop until I'm done. Here it is now. And this is using the Call It For DMC. I'm stitching one over one on 28 count. This is a white monaco even weave um it's one of the ones that you can get at a big box store um it's so stiff i'm hoping the more that i work with it it'll soften up but right now it is still so stiff but yeah that's where snow glove is at this point So those are all of my whips, things that I'm not done with yet. Um, I did have a finish for now, an FFN. Um, this is a part of a round robin that I'm doing with Kat of Whittier Stitches, Stephanie of Cross Stitch the Globe, and Jordan over at Needle House. Um, we are stitching the Antique Scissors and Spools by Shakespeare's Petalera. It looks like this. 
and I started this, I want to say right around last time that y'all saw it. Maybe it was the beginning of the month. No, I take that back. I started it right at the beginning of January, but I didn't put any stitches really into it until this month, which was like the official start of our round robin. And so yeah, this is where it was the last time that I showed it to y'all. And here it is finished for now. This is the section that Kat figured out would be best for the first person to stitch, and then each other individual is going to stitch some of the spools and scissors that are around at the top here. Um, my part I stitched in Gentle Art. Let me look at my notes. Yeah, Gentle Art, Banker's Gray. But I've asked the, the others in this group if they would kindly stitch on mine in the color that they are stitching theirs in um, so that I have um, a really colorful mem memorative piece when it comes back to me. So I'm excited to see what that looks like and to see each of these ladies talk about it on their channels once they get it. And yeah, so here is Scissors and Spools. Let me take a, a screenshot for my, my cover, hold on. It's always so awkward getting a a good thumbnail, you know? Alright. And now, we get to talk about my new starts. So, I had three new starts since I saw y'all last. Um, the first one is a Blackbird Designs pattern. Um, this is one of their Magical Mystery Tour uh, pieces. Um, which is a stitch along that Stephanie at Cross Stitch the Globe and Julian Stitches 16 are hosting, which is called the Fab Four Fan Sal. Um, and I have decided I wanted to work on Octopus's Garden. And so I started this one on February 13th with everybody. And... This is where I've gotten to so far. I'm going to apologize for these hoop marks because I pressed this, surprisingly. I never ironed anything before my videos, but I did iron this and they're still so visible. So that's going to be a problem when I try to finish this. Um, but yeah. This is on 38 count Vermeer Blue by Access Commodities, and I'm using the DMC conversion for my floss, and I think it's turning out really great so far. Um, obviously I'll make some decisions on if I want to use the fancy floss um, later on if I start stitching something and I say I really I want the variegation. So, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it, but here is my little octopus start so far. I love him. So yeah, Octopus's Garden by Blackbird Designs. And I would like to point out, I have a puppy who's kind of barking in her crate right now, or whimpering in her crate. I apologize if you can hear her. I will go get her. As soon as I'm done filming this so that she's not cooped up but if she was out of her crate right now she would be an absolute menace and would not let me film so I might have to pause and go get her okay sounds like she settled so 
the the next start that I had was on Valentine's Day and I am she's still whining which is because I'm talking in here and she can hear me I'm gonna go get her and um, bring her in here and y'all can say hi how about that I'll be right back so this is Brie for for anyone who's new here she is our <laughs> new puppy she is a almost four month old uh, Shih Tzu miniature poodle mix <laughs> hi um, and she's a little menace but we love her right right and She's not gonna let me film the rest of this video. Stay out of my hair. Alright. I only have a little bit left. I only have a little bit left. Uh, please. Alright. Say bye. 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 And I'm gonna go stick her back and hopefully she shushes for just a little bit longer. Okay. We'll try and fly through the rest of this as quickly as I possibly can because she is not having being in her crate anymore. So, Valentine's Day. I started the Quaker Hearts by Modern Folk Embroidery. It looks like this. And I just got a small start on it. This is where I've gotten to so far. Uh, fabric is 36 count winter moon. I believe that's a Zweigart fabric. And the floss is classic color works ribbon red. And I'm stitching one over two. teeny tiny little stitches. They're so cute. I love them. This is really pretty so far. The fabric, it's it's hard to tell in this lighting. This is not white and it's not like that um, antique white looking either. It's got definitely more of a, a yellow undertone. Let me see if I show it just without the behind. That's a little bit better. See, it's got that yellow undertone. Um, there's obviously my curtains behind me are pure white. And I love how this is looking so far. So yeah, the Quaker parts. Eventually, um, this has a year in it. I'm going to stitch the year that me and my husband got married, which was 2023, last year. So, ta-da! Last but not least, new start. I decided there was no time as good as any as yesterday to start the Vanishing Isle by Autumn Lane Stitchery. It looks like this. This is a piece that I'm really excited to take with me. Um, so I'm not gonna like I'm gonna work on it a little bit, get it close to a finish, um, but not finish it until I get to the Queen City Stitch Retreat in October, um, which is hosted by Maggie of Kitchy Whips and uh, Fiber Arts Amy. And obviously they have some other helpers in there. I don't know who off the top of my head, but I will find out and I'll make sure that I talk about y'all next time. So I started the Vanishing Isle. <laughs> it's such a small start. Um, I do try to like put in about a hundred stitches on my new starts every time. Um, I think this is right around there. Uh, I don't keep track of my stitches on paper patterns, only on the ones that are pattern keeper compatible. 
So I just started the Miss Jets today. I started, this is the triple shell, and then the small little house. I swear, living next to a naval air station is a treat and a half. <laughs> Anyways, so this is my small start on the Vanishing Isle. And this is a piece of fabric um, from one of my fabric of the month. This is Mystic Rain um, from Millennial Fabrics. Uh, this was the fabric from last month and it was absolutely perfect for this piece. I had bought another piece for it but this one just absolutely screamed Vanishing Isle. So I switched out to this one. It's an 18 count and I'm using the call for DMC and I love it. It's so fun to stitch. And so yeah, those are all of my new starts. Now, let's talk about some haul, shall we? So I have quite a bit. Well, normal amount. Let's, let's say that. First things first, I got some other craft supplies. Um, these two different, upside down punches. This one is a little bit bigger and then a normal hole punch. Um, this is for floss drop making. Um, I have some stuff that I need to put together as my like small little gift exchange things for the retreat. So here's these and then obviously they will come in handy every time that I want to make my own floss drops. And, you know, usually those are to give away to people because personally, um, I like this particular acrylic floss drop that I get off of Amazon. So, well, if we have, you know, some fun stuff to exchange, I'll make sure that I mention those to you. Second thing, DMC. To Joanne. now have a full set of DMC. It's so exciting. It's a CVS lace receipt, but all of my DMC cases are full. Obviously this side is the like specialty threads, but this is Specialty threads start in this section and go over, but so from here over is DMC and both of these ones are DMC. And this is the full set. Obviously, I need to finish bobbinating these. They were on bobbins that I didn't like, so I put my labels on another, you know bobbin stuck it behind they still need to be transferred over so you can see they will sit in the sections like that and I'm really really thrilled at how um, how these cases turn out obviously they are double-sided so um, I only need two and look at how beautiful these are the pip and chip DMC mini labels on them, and ta-da! And if I want to, these just these even just stand upright too. They're not all that space-consuming, which awesome, super great. And now, if I want to make conversions to DMC, or if something is in DMC and I want to switch it to a fancy floss, usually I just pull out one of my bobbins and I will look through my fancy floss stash, try and match it up, um, or vice versa. I'm, I'm thrilled. So, DMC, check. The... 
the next thing that I have to show y'all is a bit of um, happy mail. So I entered a giveaway on Witch's Garden Crafts Instagram. Um, and usually I don't win giveaways, like, <laughs> especially when there's hundreds of people entering, which is what happened here. I was just like, oh, it'll be fun. Um, you know, congratulate them on, I think they had reached a milestone subscriber or follower count, if I'm not mistaken. And I wanted to just congratulate them. But this was a friend giveaway, so whoever, you know, was responding to the giveaway, they would tag a friend, and if they won, that friend would also get a piece. So I tagged Kat over at What Are Your Stitches, and she's already talked about this on her most recent video, but, uh, I won. <laughs> this is a beautiful piece of Witch's Garden fabric. Um, the color is Slasher. It's a 16 count Ida. And I will say it is one of the most beautiful pieces of fabric that I have ever seen. And I am just, I, I can't even explain how, oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. So I probably should take it out of the, the plastic so y'all can see it better. beautiful. Oh, I don't know if I mentioned it, but this color is called Slasher. And obviously the camera is not going to do it justice because it's going to blow me out color-wise. Oh well, come back. So thank you, Witch's Garden Crafts, for such an amazing piece of fabric and congratulations. Um, so yeah, um, little tiny bit of a freebie too. I got this little ornament cut of it. It looks like 20 count. It's either 18 or 20 count of this beautiful green blue fabric too. I'd have to put a quirky Quaker on here to see if it's uh, a good size for one. So, this is also beautiful, and so thank you again. Next up is Fabric of the Month. So, I have three Fabric of the Months. Um, Be Stitch Me is not here yet, but it's supposed to arrive today. So, uh, here is me in the future talking about Be Stitch Me, uh, and ta-da! Okay, hi. Um, the Stitch Me fabric just arrived, so I haven't even opened it yet. I'm gonna open it live. And I am in the 36 count colors and neutrals, so this should be a color. Oh, Ooh, butter bullet? That is orange. Holy moly. Okay, so let me see if I open. Oh, so beautiful. Alright, this is a fat quarter. It is, it looks definitely more yellow on camera, but this is very orange. This color is called We Can't Elope. <laughs> so it's like a cantaloupe orange. It's beautiful. Well done, Brandy. Also, the pun in that name. Fantastic. Alright. And there's Be Stitch Me. Alright, and so now that we've covered Be Stitch Me, I have 
uh, Millennial Fabrics and Fiberlicious Any Fibers. So let's do Fiberlicious first. February um, 2024. Y'all don't want to see what this looks like. I'm sure that some other people might already have shown it. But I get 36 count uh, and a fat quarter. And this one is called Burning Woods Crackling Fire. It looks so good. Oh, it's so pretty. So I'm showing all of the fabrics that I get, but I have no idea what I want to use them for. So if I showed these and you say, oh my gosh, that would look so amazing with XYZ, let me know because I, I need ideas for what to stitch on some of these things. And maybe then we can stitch it together. All right, go back in your sleeve, please. Thank you. All right. And my last fabric of the month is from Millennial Fabrics. Um, also, if you are unfamiliar, uh, Sarah, who is the owner over at Millennial Fabrics, has a floss tube channel, Millennial Stitchers. I will tag them below. And they dye, it's her and her significant other, the most beautiful fabrics. This is 18 count, a fat quarter of Honeydew Melon. Oh, I can't even like show you really what this looks like because it's too bright in here, but it is the most beautiful lime green just is so fun. I have a couple ideas of what I want to put on this, but obviously the right piece will just jump out at me. So yeah. Honeydew Melon is my February fabric from Millennial Fabrics. And those are all of my fabric of the months. I do have one floss of the month and it's not your typical floss of the month. I get the Athena Athena Stitching Goddess Designs thread packs from Stacy at Thread the Needle Stitchery. And basically what she does is Athena curates a pack of colors each month based off of something Harry Potter related. And so February is based on come on please Madame Hoodiefoot's tea shop. And so she just picks out um five different colors of classic color works or gentle art that kind of fit that vibe. So here, put these on my little board here. Do to do are the colors for February. So let's see, this is Classic Colorworks Dulce de Leche. Classic Colorworks Little Pink Peony. Classic Colorworks Rose Petal. Gentle Art Vintage Lace. And Gentle Art Cameo Pink. And they are all beautiful, and I don't think I have any of these in my stash yet, so 
win-win beautiful thank you to both Athena and Stacy for getting me these fibers each month so appreciated now they will go back in their little bag until I put them into my tracker where I keep track of everything that I own so that I don't purchase things twice if I don't have to. And last little bit of haul, I went to one of my big box stores um, that usually doesn't have very much cross stitch. They have uh, DMC and pretty much that's it. And they made a few different fabrics, but very little. I found Slygard. Is this vintage? Yeah, it's 18 count vintage. Um, and let me pop it out of its plastic here. I'm sure if um, you recognize the brand that was on here. Um, but, uh, so, this looks like it's an eighth of a yard. Does it say on here? Do, do, do. It's 11 by 18, which I think is close to an eighth. This is a printed fabric, so on the back it's white. But on this side, it's got this beautiful modeling. So that's exciting. I found it in 18 count, which is my preferred. And so I need to figure out what I want to put on here. I'm very excited. And that is all my haul. So let's talk market. I, I'm really excited for the designs that are being put out this year. Um, everyone is doing an amazing job. All the designers that have put out, uh, I should say the ones that have put out like previews, um, fantastic. I can't wait to see what is released that didn't have previews. So let me my tablet and talk about the ones that I really like. Alright. So pardon me as I look down and I read off of my wish list. So I will pop up pictures here and obviously I could go in order of artists. Let me see if this will sort sort by artist. I just want you to sort by artist. Why well, won't you sort by artist? Yes, that's close enough. Alright, so first thing on my wish list is They Come at Night by Fox and Rabbit. Um, I love Luna Moths. The, the color of them is beautiful. And I love the fact that this is like a mandala. So I may or may not do a round robin again with my friends with this one. We'll see how I feel after I stitch one quadrant. Or obviously after I, you know, bring this one home. If I want to stitch four quadrants. So. That is They Come at Night. Next up, I have several from Heart and Hand, and if you are familiar with this channel, Heart and Hand is my favorite designer. So they are releasing three tiny towns this market, which is incredible, and all three are on my wish list. So first we have the Anytown Tiny Town. 
this is the the pattern that they released a bit ago that was exclusive to keepsakes as you know if you look really closely you can see on the flag in the center it says keepsakes um, but obviously you can customize it with your LNS or leave the words off or what have you um, but then they're also releasing this more any town tiny town um, which is just a bunch of different buildings that you could interchange or have all stitched together or you could stitch it by itself whatever you want to do um, that's the beauty of these tiny towns is you can add take away um, kind of whatever you want to make it as long as short if you just want one little bit to stitch they're great for that um, so the third tiny town that Heart and Hand is releasing is the Frosty Tiny Town, and this one is the one I'm most excited for. Um, this and its accompanying piece, Frosty Frill, are very high on my wish list, um, to the point where I am almost regretting not pre-ordering them. But I know eventually my LNS will have them, and I will pick them up as quickly as I possibly can. So, those are heart and hand, at least where they are situated on my wish list. Um, I think there's one more that's on here that I'll talk about in a second. So, next up is the Saltbox Fairy Vi Village by Petal Pusher. This is such a cute little um, pattern. It would probably be very quick to stitch. So, does it give a... It's only 76 by 45. And these spring beautiful colors, I just can't get over. It's so cute. Um, so that one's exciting. Um, next on here is The Dance by The Proper Stitcher. Um, I will link Annie down below where you can go watch her channel or go and peruse more of her patterns because they're all beautiful. But the dance is this beautiful um, willow and the quote says a forest full of stars that hang upon the limbs of magic flowing willows dancing in the wind. I just think that is so sweet. That bee skip. Oh my gosh. Well done. Um... Next on here is this little tiny piece by Franny Ritter, which is the thankful sunflower. Um, sunflowers are my favorite. I, you know, if I see this and, or if I'm, you know, buying off of one, two, three stitch, I'm gonna just need a little bit extra in my cart. This will be the one that I add. So, super cute and Next are Erin Elizabeth's Tears. She's releasing three. I like two. So the first one is the Stitchy Tear. Oh my gosh, adorable. I can't get over how cute that little pair of scissors is on the top. And oh my gosh, the vintage sewing machine. Perfect. Love it. Can't have it soon enough. And then also the cat tier. Um, if you are new here, I have two cats as well. And they are my boys. I love them. And I've always thought of myself as kind of a crazy cat lady. So this is perfect for me. I love it. Alrighty. Next is a Finally a Farm Girl pattern. This is Under the Mistletoe. It's this cute little uh, Santa and Mrs. Claus doing a little kiss under the mistletoe. And I think it would make such a cute little ornament. So that's on my list, as well as Pirate Quaker by Bendy Stitchy. Um, I'm also a, like, 
a pirate fan. Um, every time I've gone to a Renaissance festival, I love the pirate pirate theme days. Those are my favorite. I am a big fan of sea shanties as well. So it's it's a no-brainer. Uh, <laughs> that cute little yo ho <laughs> just brings me joy. So pirate Quaker. And then next up is the Needleworkers Oath by Teresa Coquit. I I love anything stitching related in my cross stitch. So this this cute little lady, first of all, that skirt stunning. Love it. Beautiful color. And then the the wording I promise to keep needlework in my hoop and try with all my heart to stitch daily. And I do. I do try to stitch daily. Um, I definitely don't always accomplish it, especially having a puppy now um, and a husband who also likes to see me occasionally. <laughs> but I, I do try to at least put 50 to 100 stitches into a project every day. So, that is super sweet and definitely on my list. Uh, next up I have on here When I Think of Flowers by Puntini Puntini. Um, I just think this is beautiful, the colors are awesome, and it would make a really pretty spring pattern to display. Alright, next I have... Mobsta by The Elegant Thread and when I saw this I kid you not laughed so loud <laughs> it's just so perfect the pun is phenomenal 10 out of 10 great job the he sure is a mobsta <laughs> alright Next up I have Americana Blue by October House Fiber Arts. Um, I'm definitely leaning more into my monochromatic era. Um, stitching with one color is so good mindless, like not having to, like obviously you have to count and like make sure you're putting your stitches in the right place, but you don't have to be like, okay, I only have to do three stitches of this color, and they're here, here, and here. So, should I, like, carry, or do I, like, stop and start, or bleh, just... Monochromatic, beautiful, love the stitchy aspect of this piece. Um, it is probably in my favorite color, also. This blue is absolutely stunning. Um... And it just looks like a lot of fun. It's not like a monotonous border or anything. Um, you've got a lot of interest, and I'm excited. I, I really hope that my LMS gets that one. Alright, next up on here is Heartstring Samplery, My Scissors, My Rules. Self-explanatory. Don't touch my craft scissors. If you do, just don't touch my craft scissors. Um, yeah. Alright, next up is another by The Proper Stitcher, and this is Spring Sampler. Um, I love how simple and elegant this pattern is. Um, I was looking at it the other day. I think I would want to switch to pinks. That or blue because the border kind of reminds me of blueberries and I think that would be really beautiful so obviously I would have to pull out you know the threads and things and I might just stitch it in purple but that's what spoke to me when I first saw this and all right, next up I have where'd you go? Beachcomber by Lindy Stitches um, again, 
if I haven't already mentioned, we live by the ocean. I love the beach. So all of these beach critters and motifs are just absolutely stunning. The quote says, comb the beach for treasure with me. My heart resides beside the sea, which is just, it speaks to me so much. I, I think it's beautiful. And it's, you know, it's quirky too. Like <laughs> that crab, I think that's the first time that I like really looked at that crab. He is so darling. Beautiful. Alright. Then I have Silver Creek samplers on here. There are like three that I absolutely adore from Silver Creek samplers. There is one that I can see myself 100% stitching, and that is Rainbow Crossing. Um, my senior year of high school, so. 2015, 2014, because it was before I graduated, um, the puppy, I say puppy, dog, that I had picked out as a puppy when I was five years old, passed away. Uh, she was... fourteen? I got her in 2002 or 2003, and she lived until 2014, so less than that. I can't do math. Obviously, you're seeing me not be able to do math, which is kind of embarrassing, but beside the point. Anyways, her name was Tilly. If I have a picture of her, I will put it up here. She was the light of my life, and not a day goes by that I don't think about her. Actually, it took a lot of convincing from my husband to get Brie, because um, I just still didn't feel ready for another dog. Uh, so I would love to stitch this in hold the memory of Tilly in my heart, and then know that, you know, she's crossed the Rainbow Bridge, and I need to love other dogs. So, that is my little story behind definitely wanting to stitch that piece. Alright. Next up on my list is Floral Etchings 2 by Heart and Hand. Um, I will say that the Floral Etchings 1 is also on my list, even though that one was released prior. Um, they're just so sweet, and obviously you could stitch them together like they are, or individually. Um, they would make probably really adorable trading cards. We'll see. Anyways, then I have a couple by the Artsy Housewife. Uh, is this mellow yellow or just yellow? One, two, three stitch is calling it just yellow, but I think this pattern is called mellow yellow. Um, the vintage feel of these flowers is just so fun. The border, absolutely stunning. This is the one that caught my eye the most out of all of the patterns that she released. The other one that I think is so funny and cute is Vicious, and this is that cat that is breaking off the branch of the plant, and same. Same. Alright. Then I have one by Rami's Creations, or Romy's Creations, I think it's Rami. And I liked It's a Beautiful Day, and it is always a beautiful day to make something. I want to stitch this so that I can hang it here in my craft room. Uh, it is 
it's not very big, right? Only 100 by 100, and obviously that's, you know, not full coverage, so it shouldn't take very long. All right, now I have another by Erin Elizabeth. This is the Pumpkin Lane Sampler. Um, the, her designs are always just so clean, and I just love the look of those pumpkins at the bottom. Uh, obviously, this one is stitched in dinky dyes, and I probably wouldn't splurge. Who knows? I might to buy those colors, because this is just so pretty. Alright, then I have the Wild what Wild Flower Welcome by Talon Emblem. Those are like the two two words together that are really difficult for me to say. Plus that designer, Talon Emblem. I have to really think when I'm saying it, otherwise it comes out all twisted. Anyways, Wild Fal Wild flower welcome. Uh, this beautiful, these birds, just absolutely stunning. And I love that she gives us two different colorways um, to stitch it in. There's a very good chance that I will stitch it on a lighter colored fabric, um, like a mid-tone fabric, but stitch the, the gray birds but the, the bottom colors of the flowers. Just a thought. We'll see. And then also make a monogram. And these colorways are beautiful too. I love the orange and blue one. 100%, that's the one that I would do. All right. Last couple on here is uh, Jan Hicks, Arabesque, oh my goodness. This one definitely caught my eye when it first came out as a preview. Uh, the Art Deco in the top right hand corner and that beautiful flower motif in the bottom left. I just, oh, my heart, I definitely am becoming much more of a red sampler girly. So. Not a, not a question there. And lastly on here is one that I added because I like it. I don't know how much I would want to stitch it, but I do love the look of it, is All Hallows Eve by Blueberry Rich Designs. And I'm definitely becoming more of a traditional sampler person, but I don't know if I'll ever lean wholly into the reproduction sampler realm, but there definitely are some sampler-esque patterns that I think are just absolutely beautiful. This one is no exception. So, that, that is my list of market things that I love, and hopefully if my LNS has them in stock the next time I go. I will pick up a few of them and uh, you'll be able to see it, see those, and yeah. Last thing that I want to do before I let y'all go is to mention a couple of new floss tubers. Maybe not new to the community, but new to me. So the first one is Andrew, who is the runner stitcher. I watched my first video of his yesterday or the day before, and uh, he has some awesome projects, um, especially some of the mirabilias that he started. Um, I just, I, I love the look of seeing people stitch fancy ladies. I myself have one that I'm stitching, which is candy. I don't know if I'm a fancy lady stitcher. Obviously I'll finish Candy because she is absolutely stunning and um, Kat let me um, get a look at her before 
she released the pattern and so I really I do need to finish her up so that Kat can put up some color pictures of what she looks like stitched in the colorway that I chose um, but I don't know going forward how many other Ansi ladies I will choose to stitch but go check out Andrew's channel see what he's up to and yeah uh, next up is Helen the Diddy Stitcher um, I think I've watched two or three of her videos like as they've released um, she's got a plethora of backlog for me to go and watch um, she is a I don't know from from where but she's definitely in England or in the UK somewhere because um, she has the most beautiful accent and I just absolutely love listening to her speak um, she does talk a lot about tarot usually in the beginning of her videos which I find fascinating and something <sighs> just so so nice to be able to fo focus your mind in that way like what is the universe putting out there for you at this time in your life like what do you need and I love uh, everything that she's stitching on as well and lastly is So Make and Create. This is Amy's channel. She is a new to the community floss tuber. She just put up her second video. Um, and she has a lot of fun projects. One in particular that I'm excited to see come together is her Generation 1 Pokemon stitch by Lord Libidin. Um, obviously, she's doing the, the vertical version of it and I'm doing the one that's in the circle but every time I see someone stitching on one of those pieces I just I get all warm and fuzzy like oh I'm also stitching a Lord Lipidin Pokemon and I want to see their progress so uh, go check her out and follow along for her uh, progress on that piece as well as some other fun stuff so uh, that's that's all I have for y'all today I am hoping that once I cut this down because I had to obviously get up and deal with the dog at one point in the middle here uh, that I can cut this down a little bit longer than the hour and eight minutes that it is currently showing on my phone uh, but yeah I am super excited for what is to come in March I have uh, lots of plans. Go check out my plans video. Uh, if I can figure out how to link it in the eye, uh, I will do that where I'll talk about everything that I've got planned for the year, new starts wise, uh, and so I you can see what I have planned for March. Um, and obviously when I come back to talk to y'all in three, four weeks, we'll see. Um, I'll have started those things. So, until then, I hope you all have the best couple of weeks available to y'all, and I'll see you next time. Happy stitching! At 29 and I find myself wondering, what did happen to the last 10? I ran away with my life, fast forward, never turn